Hello, Skylar back again for another episode of Fishing Basics. Uh, today we are going to be inside. I just came back to show this lovely lake that I have uh, in my apartment building. Uh, can't fish in there. There are some fish in there. I've seen a lot of big fish. Uh, more on that on why you can't fish here uh, later episodes. But today we're going to talk about what you should have in your tackle box. Uh, not so much going over hooks, that'll be its own episode, just so much uh, more like the things that you should bring with you uh, to have a successful fishing experience. All right, let's go inside. All right, so this is my tackle box. Uh, it's a Plano two tray tackle box. Um, Plano, I've always had Plano. I'm gonna keep my hand in this apparently. Vanna White, oh, Plano. Uh, I've always had Plano uh, for every single one of my tackle boxes. Uh, two tray, I'll show you more on that, but uh, my favorite feature, and I suggest always getting tackle boxes that have these, are these top two trays right here. Right? It's easy access, you know, you always need something. I put all my stuff that's that I'm always going to need. You know, you're always going to need a knife, whether it's cutting up bait or you have to get a stubborn hook out of a fish, or if a turtle gets your uh, hook, um, usually the only way to get it out is one of those. And if you got a turtle on your line, you don't want to go fumbling through your tackle box. Uh, next one over here, uh, marker. You never know when you're going to need a marker or draw on something. Or uh, if you notice that fish are biting at like 15 feet uh, and you want to go somewhere else and then come back later, you'd always like write a little note like, oh, by the oak tree, 15 feet out. Um, these ooh, toenail clippers, um, I'll go over what these are for in a little bit. So I'll just put them right there for now. All right, <sighs> let's open this up. Most tackle boxes have latches just like this. I just push up, pull up here, that comes off, open it up, and voila, in you go. It has little holes to put locks in, but I've never really felt like I have anything too valuable in here. But you never know. Alright. And then right here on top, immediately, flashlight. Again, uh, something that you want to find right away. If you're in the dark, you want to go fumbling through it, especially when you got all these sharp hooks hanging around. Um, the only reason it's not on the top is because this one doesn't fit and I've had this flashlight for a long time and I just don't feel like uh, getting a new one. I mean it works perfect. Um, I normally don't have these all up here but I did this just so I can talk about them right away are the different type of bobbers. Now I'm just going to briefly cover these because later on I'm going to talk about bobbers more, but I'll give you the gist uh, so that way if you're watching this right before you leave, you'll know what to go with. Um, this is my favorite bobber. Um, not this one specifically, but type. I know they usually are very long, skinny, um, have this point at the very top that's so, I mean, you can cast it far out, it's a bright color, it's tall, it's easy to see. Uh, especially if there's like a, if you're in choppy water, you can see this poking out over the waves. Um, has this spring on the bottom, and the easiest way to put them on of all the bobbers. Focus. There we go. Nope. Focus. Focus. There we go. Now it's focusing. All right, but you see, there's a little. Uh, slit right there. You just pull that spring down and there's that slit. You stick your string straight through here, pull it up. There you go. You want to adjust the the how deep you're going. Just kind of pull the spring down. You can slide it up and down the line. Um, next are these bobbers. I normally don't use these bobbers. Um, they look almost the same but you notice there's no spring on it. That's because you uh, feed the line straight through it. See it's a hole straight through. Um, this is to uh, drop uh, to allow for deeper fishing. Uh, again, I'll go over that later, but basically it's because it can slide up and down the line. Uh, it'll stop when it hits a uh, bobber stopper, which is just another line that you tie onto your line. It's like uh, Inception. Uh, like I said, I normally don't use those, so I will go over them later. And then the third type of bobber this is what that two tray means. One, two. Uh, the other type of bobber is the, uh, no, just the normal globe bobber. Um, put these on is you have a hook down here and you have a hook at the top. No, they're not a fishing hook. They're not going to hurt. What you do is you put your thumb right here and uh, so you stop this hook from going down 
and then you push down on this and it's really hard to see but that hook comes up there come on focus there we go that hook comes up see and then when you put your line through there go over same thing press on it but you press the bottom uh, hook so this one comes out put your line through there and you're good to go I normally don't use these because they're not as tall if it's choppy you're not gonna be able to see them um, I just have problems with these sinking like uh, they really don't hold too much um, kind of hurts your thumb sometimes if the springs are too tight I don't know I just I don't, know, don't like them personal preference try them out you might like them okay now we're gonna get into the belly of the beast um, start with this uh, it's just little you know, uh compartmentalized uh, storage hold all your different hooks and I put my um, sinkers in here because I always lose my sinkers I've actually uh, during filming this kept finding them and throwing them in here I thought I was out but apparently I still have four so it's always good to be organized uh, next thing is let's go with these uh, needle nose pliers um, I used to have a smaller pair uh, with these also uh, apparently I didn't bring them back the last time I went fishing these are uh, well they have several purposes um, if you have a hook that's stuck inside like really deep inside the fish's mouth or it's, you just have a weird angle uh, you can take this grab onto the hook and uh, pull it out like that uh, without getting your fingers caught in there another thing is you can see there's a barb but you see these little barbs right here right that's so it doesn't slip out of the fish's mouth uh, if you're having a really hard time you can take your pliers uh, chances are you'll be able to see this sticking out of the mouth and just squeeze that barb flatten it down so that way it's able to pull easily through the fish's mouth okay the next couple things are just quick fire um, another pair of pliers another knife on here never have too many pliers or knives um, I'm surprised I haven't lost this thing lot yet um, next one uh, again another knife there you go bam never have too many knives um, here we go this is probably one of the uh, most useful fishing tools I've had it's a lighter knife bottle opener and for some reason it is a wine opener I don't know who drinks wine when they're fishing but or I don't know but the most important function is the fire itself and it doesn't work well you get more butane so I get these and refill them but yeah uh, fire I never 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 go fishing without a lighter so many useful functions uh, burn off your line uh, if you get you know need to start a fire next two things are the same thing are fishing line this uh, is a cheap one I got for free probably never gonna use it other than uh, in one of my videos I want to show you how to uh, line a reel uh, this one I only keep it in case it turns out that there are really big fish where I'm at there's a 12 pound line uh, means you can catch well more than 12 pound fish but uh, this is more for bigger fish the experience that I have is that yes uh, certain poles are rated for certain lines but the bigger the line the more likely it is to tangle it's not always a hundred percent true there are very very expensive reels that can handle thicker lines with a breeze but I'm going off of the uh, cheaper next thing uh, almost done here actually this is stink bait and it stinks well it smells horrible um, there's two really different packagings that it came in um, there's this which is in a tube so all you gotta do is take and uh, squeeze it and it goes I mean there's different types but this is one of my favorites for catfishing uh, it goes into one of these just put the nozzle in one of these holes and squeeze it and fills up this chamber and uh, the catfish can smell it and they come grab it and you got these hooks waiting to grab the catfish 
Well, the other kind, it just comes in like a peanut butter jar and you have to like take a knife and put it in there and you end up getting it on your fingers. And like I said, it's called stink bait for a reason. It smells horrible. If you've never smelled it before, well, it stinks. Um, next thing in here is a mini first aid kit. Uh, this is one that I just threw together. Um, it's not just butterfly. I mean, there's a couple of these in here, but there's uh, normal band-aids. There's some Neosporin, um, a little package of Tylenol on the inside here. You know, just basic safety stuff. You never know. Uh, you're working around a bunch of hooks. Uh, mine has a bunch of knives. So you never know when you're going to need something. Um, ooh, I take that back. This is the most important thing. It's just a plastic bag. This is used for garbage to take it with you and you uh, help the environment and yourself by keeping your fishing holes clean. People don't go around and clean up very often at these lakes and the dirtier they are the, the less fun it is to clean or to fish at so it's really important that you clean up after yourself. Okay so always have a bag with you or if you don't just take your trash with you. Um, I'm kind of uh, a stickler about if I just see trash laying down around, I'll throw it away. The biggest piece of trash being people's used line. This stuff does not dissolve in water. That's why it's used for line. So don't take your line and just bundle up into a ball and throw it in the water. Don't. Because I'm going to have to pick it up and I'm going to have to throw it away. Never mind. Take it back most important. Hey, it's still full. Forget what's in there. Okay, now kind of back to the tackle box itself. Um, this is different levels. <clears throat> different levels. Um, but each one has its own divider. Uh, see, you can, if you need a big one, it's like if you got, uh, like this guy right here, he's not gonna fit. And a smaller one, so you can just take it apart, make it smaller, make it bigger whatever size that you need. There you go. Didn't put it on right. Oh yeah, we're gonna go back to talking about this guy. This guy is used for lines like this. See that? Apparently I used this twice and didn't cut the line off of it and that drastically affects how Good, you're gonna catch fish. So you just take the fingernail clippers, clip that right off. Uh, when you're tying your line in the first place, like I do in one of my videos, you can use, uh, if you don't have scissors, use these. Take up less room than scissors, and just really handy. So, yeah. Oh, and before I forget, two things that I just took out of my tackle box to make more room is. Ta da! Bug spray. You're hanging out near a lake, standing water, all around you. What likes that area? Mosquitoes. Keep them off. Family care. And another thing uh, is sunscreen. You can be out in the sun all day, just standing there. Uh, I obviously always wear hats, but it's always good to have another layer of protection. Ooh, huge tip. Whenever you're not in here, put this back on. Because the second that you don't, that's going to happen. It's going to flip upside down, and you're going to lose all your stuff on the ground, and it's going to be a bad time. That's This is why I don't have any more sinkers, because this happened. I was able to find a lot more. Hmm. See? It's flipped upside down. Everything's still... Basically in the same spot. Oh, all my fake worms decided to run away. Nice. All right, there you have it. Tackle box, good to go. If you can think of anything else, let me know. Like I said, this is just the bare bones basics. And uh, next time I come back, I will go over uh, hooks and bait. So stay tuned for that. This has been Skylar with Fishing Basics, and thank you for watching.